Hello and welcome to Dialogue. I'm Zhou Ye in Beijing. A television advertisement for a Chinese laundry detergent has attracted a lot of attention lately, and not in a way that the advertiser would have wanted. The ad features a Chinese woman putting an African black man into a washing machine and having him come out as a light-skinned Chinese man, much to the woman's delight. After initially ignoring online outrage, the company has now apologized and made a statement condemning racism, but still accused few foreign media of overhyping this issue. So, is this issue being overhyped? Was the ad a misguided attempt at humor, or just an indication of a real problem with racism in China? And what happens now? To talk about these and much more. I'm happy to be joined in the studio by Mr. John Russell, Managing Director of North Head Communications, and Joanna Chun, an intellectual specialist. And we will also speak over the phone to Ding Hui, a former member of the Chinese national volleyball team. But before we get started, let's take a look at this. This is a commercial for China's Qiaobi laundry detergent, not a very famous brand. A Chinese woman shoves the product into a black worker's mouth in the midst of their flirting, before suddenly pushing him into a washing machine. What outraged many international viewers online is that when she reopens the machine, a pale Asian man emerges instead, to the woman's delight. The advertisement has been airing in China since at least April, but it only began to cause a sensation last week when it went viral on foreign social network sites. BBC and CNN have slammed it as blatant racism, with many netizens, both Western and Chinese, saying they are appalled and can't believe what they see. We showed the ad to some passerbys on the Chinese street, most instantly condemned it as racist. This is too much. What if a foreign laundry ad wash off the skin color of an Asian guy and turned him white? That would be unacceptable to us. Many Chinese companies fail to understand the sensitivity of racism. It's a shame, but it's common in China. But on reflection, some offered further comments. I think it might be because that we don't have much history of people, uh, of black people fighting against discrimination here in China. And that's why、uh, many people here are lack of the awareness of how sensitive this topic is. But of course, it doesn't mean that Chinese people are against the idea that everyone is equal and should be respected. Adding to the controversy is the fact that the commercial is almost a complete reproduction of an Italian detergent brand aired nine years ago. Same music, similar plot. The only difference is that the Italian product turns a white guy black. Infringing intellectual property rights is one thing to be criticized, but some Chinese netizens also questioned why the skin color can only change one way. Like in any country, Chinese law on advertisement bans discriminative content based on religion, gender, race, and ethnicity. But how this particular case got the approval from the Chinese government to be broadcasted? And how the authorities will respond remains to be seen. So, about this particular ad,、uh, first of all, what do you think of the ad? A black man is put in a washing machine and come out with a lighter color. Some say it is an attempt、uh, to be fun, and the others say, well, to equ equating a particular skin color with something. Associated with filth and dirt, it's simply abominable and inexcusable.、Mm -hmm. What do you think, John? Well, certainly, as the reaction has occurred internationally, for many people looking at it, it it comes across as unacceptable,、um, and it really、uh, makes a few points. I think this whole what's happened over the last week about the、uh, communications. First of all, there's no Such thing as a local advertisement、mm -hmm. in the age of social media. Two,、uh, I think it is、uh, particularly the timing of this is, is interesting because events in North America, Europe, with regard to discrimination 
uh, and so on. It, it's in the news. It's in the media cycle. Mm. But you also believe that this advertisement was meant to be consumed by local people, not international audience. Well, this is, I think, the, the Chinese communication industry, as it moves out, as companies move out, this is on a learning curve of mm -hmm. not only the sensibilities of China, but also what is the broader implication for, and the impact of that company's reputation and China's reputation, mm. because it's been brought into a global story. But, but, but do you believe this is simply a bad taste commercial production or there is racist undertones? Well, this is where there's a difference between motivation for the producers and the sensibilities of people who watch it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the cornerstone of communications is essentially what, how will the audience see it and respond to it. Here in China, there is, but even as the interviews, there is a changing pattern there. Mm. Um, as China, the market matures, uh, as advertising matures, but certainly that sensibility wasn't there that it could be released internationally mm. without causing a furor. Jo Joanna, what's your take? Do you I, think it is a sensitivity issue or a racist issue? I think it's both. It is quite amusing to see such a blatantly racist and also sexist advertisement is so alarming and mm. disappointing in many ways. If you think China has experienced an economic power, you would have imagined Chinese advertiser would have equipped themselves to create something culturally sensitive, politically correct, and a professionally intelligent ad. But this one is no excuse a very bad advertisement for China but, but as you, a whole. Do you believe that the motivation of the commercial, ma commercial makers is to ridicule a different race? I don't believe that actually. I actually have a sense of they're totally innocent. I feel China is maybe powerful economically, but professionally from the advertising point of view, I think they are just, I mean, they're blatantly like just downright ignorant in mm. a way. How can an advertising agency doing a global ad mm. allow such statement to be out? And I think I cannot be so forgiving as John. Uh -huh. You cannot produce things like this to arouse like, uh, I mean, public um, anguish, mm -hmm. you see. We have another guest on the line, uh, Mr. Ding Hui. He is a former member of the China national volleyball team and was the first Chinese national with black African ancestry to be selected for a national team here in China. Uh, he currently attends university in Florida, where we will speak to him uh, via telephone today. Uh, good morning, Ding Hui. Hey, good morning. Uh, How are you guys doing? What do you Thanks think of this detergent advertisement in the first place? I mean, I thought it was a crazy idea for this company to, to make this kind of commercial, you know, mm -hmm. as a profit business company. I mean, I mean, from my understanding, this, the, the, the bottom line is at least you understand that you have a social responsibility. I mean, on the other hand, this company is not going to make any, like, it's not going to make the products any better by making fun of this person who has a dark skin. But do you and believe and this is a racist value to the core? I mean, I yeah, I think so. I thought that it was discrimin discriminating and unethical. It was really ethical, you know, unethical. And what do you make of the gap of perception uh, between Chinese uh, viewers and overseas viewers? Some Chinese think this is totally innocent joke, while some overseas viewers regard this as blatant racist remarks. I have a different perspective on, on this one. I think it's, it's better not to talk about it. You know, don't mention this because if you talk about it, you, you make this a big deal. You know, I'm not saying like everybody is the same. You know, of course we're so different. Mm. Like in, especially in China's culture, like the, this country was really isolated itself. Right now, this. This door, I would say, it's wide open. We still um, getting accepted, you know, this kind of new things. And then, uh, like, we came from different backgrounds, you know, speak different languages, and you know, eat different kind of food. But remember, like, living and working with people from diverse backgrounds, especially this company, like, you really need to gain some knowledge 
and have a better understanding of how to respect others. Mm -hmm. uh, this company in its future. I understand that you Go grew ahead. up in China. Uh, of course, the Chinese, many say, has a high level of ethnic homogeneity. Most of the people, most of the population here are Han Chinese. Uh, in your opinion, what do you think the Chinese uh, thinking about race and race issue? I mean, I have worked and lived with like wonderful people in, in China. They at least they respect me as a as a part of this group. You know, I mean, there's no difference than others. So, like, uh -huh. I mean, I feel like very comfortable like working and living with people who are around me, especially in sports team. So. I mean, like, doesn't seem a problem for me. I, I, I don't know about others, but uh, I mean, in this case, the people in this case, I, I thought it was like really mm, appropriate. I mean, it can be one of the seriously. I mean, I wanted if, if there was a chance. I mean, I would have wanted to talk to talk to the boss of this company. You know, I want to make sure you're honest, so you made a mistake. All right, I, I think uh, the line has some problems. Well, anyway, thank you uh, for taking this call and. and uh, sharing your thoughts. Thank you, Ding Hui. Uh, let's come back to the perception issue. Because before issuing an apology, uh, the company, the detergent company, um, initially it said that uh, it will all because the foreign media has been hyping this, they are oversensitive, but after several days, uh, the advertisement uh, was pulled off uh, mm. the media and the company apologized and ask the people to stop spreading around uh, this information. It seems their stances have been changing. What do you make of this change? Uh, I think the uh, image makers, the advertising agency, need to be aware that they have a responsibility to the social well-being. And they cannot just create something that's disturbing. But obviously, they didn't see this coming. Uh, well, you cannot play that you're ignorant, then create such a problem. You, th there's no excuse that they, they should do this. They should be better informed, better be part of the global civilization, instead of just treating China as one market. Because you're using a foreign image in a Chinese commercial, mm. and you're treating it in such a way that's with no respect. This uh, reminds me of something I can call the Chinese supremacy, that I can see it's coming. In the past, it's the white that you celebrate, the white is supreme, the black is always being a servant. Now the Chinese seem to play the central role that they are now finally in charge, so now they can put people down, and this is so disturbing to me. Uh, but this is an isolated case. This company may be a small advertising company, um, mm. not exposed to international practice. Can we blame them for giving this kind of remarks? Uh, on a racist foundation? Do you think yeah. so, John? Well, I, just looking at the sequence of this whole crisis, if you wish to call it, very slow in getting out the messaging. It took a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, in, in, and missed the point. Uh, so the, the whole issue was defi being defined for them. The, se the second point is the messaging uh, talked about the media being the problem mm. and totally no analysis of the audiences and the sensitivities that have been aroused and the how it was perceived so you know in the old term of crisis you deal with people first you deal with if there's environmental issues and and uh, then property loss and then deal mm. with your reputation and the other theory is that the advertisement company intentionally want to create it, uh, the situation because it caused a stir, I it grabbed a so. lot of attention, yeah. uh, so it may help sell their products. No, that showed, if that's the case, China really, I mean, lose its morality. Of course, it's morality. totally speculation, but uh, people are just uh, dubious. I, I think the Chinese advertising agency need to reevaluate its professionalism. They need to have an educational process, learn something from the professional ad ad making process. You know, making an advertising uh, an ad is, is a process of introducing public consciousness. You're massaging public consciousness or subconsciousness consciousness although you're selling a product you're actually shaping an awareness mm -hmm. and this awareness is crucial to so social you're saying the company should have a social responsibility Absolutely. not just to sell products not just commercial responsibility china need to have its bottom line we seems to lose it so it doesn't really really look good china's image 
in a world Do you platform. also blame the company for fa failing um, to do that? There are failures there, definitely, because uh, any advertising uh, wishes to get an emotional response. And if the emotional response is uh, not affinity to your product, but rather kind of mm. uh, you're presenting a totally different set of mm. values, then you know, it's cheap advertising. But, but if the it's emotional response from the Chinese uh, and the overseas users are quite different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Many it, Chinese say, I don't have a problem seeing this advertisement. It shows the gap between the, uh, s the level of understanding of, of s advertising culture, uh -huh. of civilization on its own. You know, advertising is a coding, encoding and decoding process through which we introduce... But if the advertisement and the producer of this uh, product is meant to sell this product locally, should he or she worry about overseas audience who happen to have a glimpse of the advertisement? Well, it's not about overseas well, it, audience. Yeah. Well, it, I think it, I agree with that. I, I, sorry, I disagree with that. In as much as the company came back and said, we think we're, uh, I think the struggling with the actual word, that as China mo wants to move out, uh, we've let it down. Uh, and as a company, they've been let down, but also is this the projection that China wants to present internationally? I think, it, I think a great deal of good can come from this. Mm. If there's learning in the advertising industry, if there's people with products, then all right, mm. one, there's no such thing as local advertising. Uh, you've got to have everything okay. can go global. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. We'll come back to more discussions on this advertisement. You've been watching Dialogue here on CCTV News. Don't go away. We'll be right back. So many of the overseas criticism uh, point at the problem of race. Uh, how a community look at race problem actually has its political historical, cultural, and social mm -hmm. context. The problem is racism doesn't have an institutionalized system here in China because uh, the Chinese nation has a high level of ethnic and racial homogeneity. Uh, it doesn't have the historical baggage of slavery or, uh, or apartheid like in many other countries. What do you think of the race problem here in China? Is it overhyped? No, it's not overhyped, although this race issue is a, is a central issue that can review China's problem. I think the Chinese people... What is the problem? The problem is, I think, China become too arrogant. They think, if you think you have money, it doesn't mean you have the right morality. It doesn't mean you really care about the but world. But do you think this is something about racial discrimination? I don't think they do it intentionally. I just felt they, they, they just don't know better, I felt. Mm. I didn't feel that they intentionally wanting to do it. I think they are because copying... Because the Chinese don't have a history of living with black or African uh, people uh, in, the, in, the, in a large scale. I have a sense they are just copying other people's commercial, which in itself is a copyright issue they infringe on That's if they did not thing. purchase. Uh -huh. Yeah. Secondly, they, this ad has no creativity at all. Thirdly, they, they uh, just put black people down as a joke and humorously. So they just, they, I cannot forgive them for doing this just because they don't know better. Uh, I, I, I think, it, yes, it's certainly the use of, it, it, it has two big issues on this creativity and the, the challenges of using humor, mm -hmm. that how far it travels mm. as far as humor is concerned without giving offense. Mm -hmm. Also, any society has fault lines, social fault lines. Uh, here, again, you, you see a bit uh, the D2 Pal type of uh, discrimination between regions and where people come from. Also. Uh, the the traditions of the farmer and mm. so on versus the middle class. The divide between urban and rural, yeah. between educated and uneducated. And that, those for every society has fault lines. Mm. That, that then it's a matter of w how it manages those fault lines, without it creating disturbances or discrimination. Mm. But, yeah. but here, it, it has a lot to do with how the Chinese people view the issue of color and colored people. 
mm. uh, because aesthetically here in China, many people regard uh, having light skinned, uh, fair skin to be the epitome of beauty. Uh, here in China, we say uh, one white covers a thousand defects. So it seems we associate white with being pure yeah. and good looking, while dark and black was not so good looking and filthy. Yeah, that standard of beauty has remained throughout the centuries, although a lot of other standard of beauty has shifted. But this skin issue, fair skin, is still the top uh, one to keep. So you don't think this ad is more meant to be consumed in this way because black and white means different things aesthetically, not racially? I think partially they meant that. That's why they use this color as a creative scheme. But they, they step on a uh, light mine and they, they just mm. did not know it better, I felt. Mm. I wish that's the scenario. But I don't think they should be um, innocently doing things like this, mm. I mean, without doing research. A good advertiser is you study your demographics. You complete the process of communication by providing the signifier that your audience can interpret. So the social grammar that's in being embedded in this particular process so I know is not complete. You've been involved in advertising and uh, public relations industry uh, for many years. Uh, as an insider, what do you think an advertisement company should do when putting out a commercial like this involving people of different races, different nationalities? I think the first thing they should do is to do... Should they have a focus group to study uh, whether this is appropriate? Very suitable? good. Focus group is one uh, research. Another one is perhaps to just study from the previous case and do a case-by-case -case like uh, comparison. But most importantly is the cultural sensitivity that must mm. be there before you execute any professional I mean, uh, product production. And I always encounter new market repositioning when I was in New York City doing all these ads, transforming them from the English into a Chinese one. The number one issue is to study the psychology of the Chinese mm -hmm. and then study their new behavior. We must be carefully studying your target audience. Then you execute your message accordingly because your goal is to excite and then to create motivation, then create call for action. Mm -hmm. But this ad totally failed that. It turns but us But coming back off. to John's point, probably uh, that commercial maker was not aware that all uh, advertisement are not local any longer. They still think it is going to be consumed by Chinese consumers who don't have much of an idea about race. So why yeah. bother? Well, I think that's exactly. And we see time and time again where the Chinese social media pick up activities and whether it's advertisements or actions internationally and are quite free to comment on it. So as companies go out, as they become more international or have the aspirations to, everything has got to be able to travel, mm -hmm. which makes it much more, the, the focus groups, the testing to make sure that, uh, and this creates even more challenges, to have something that is creative, distinctive, and isn't the bland, and I understand, you know, washing powders can be, uh, there is a type mm. of uh, advertising that is kind of rote for these, but it has to be careful, otherwise it just bounces back. And do you think the regulator has some kind of role to play here? Oh, uh, absolutely. I think advertising uh, a bureau, and they need to have regulation in terms of governing uh, the boundaries that what you should step onto, what you shouldn't. I, I think that there seems to be laws need to be reissued here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely. Uh, learning curve for the Chinese industry. But what I really want to say is, instead of saying that they don't know better, I think there is a sense of apathy that, or indifference. And this is what I'm most afraid of. Mm -hmm. if, if our image maker could care less about what, what the image making meaning, the significance is, then we're losing uh, the social responsibilities. And it's all about commercial production. This is the fatal, I mean, a fatal mistake that China might be making, we just definitely need to avoid so, that. Do you think it is more a problem of lack of training for those commercial makers or 
lack of responsibility of those companies. Both. The lack of professional understanding of what the true advertising process should be. I think they should study more from U.S. or U.N. commercials and study its creativity. We hail creativity as, its, as a crown in this industry. It is in the end a commercial industry, but it's also artistic industry. I think it, from seeing from this ad, it seems to be losing its artistic sense. Mm. It has no creativity whatsoever. The only thing that's changed is the color. That's mm. a fatal stroke that kills this ad completely. It is simplified one. See, it's it's I, I, alarming. I take a, a, a positive. Every crisis can produce an opportunity. Yeah. Yes, and of if, course. if this gets people thinking in the advertising industry, but also the product people, the marketing uh, heads of marketing, that, all right, we have to be able to do as the industry, as our industries mature. The, things have got to change. Mm. There's got to be a certain greater sensibility and will this add and will this product travel? Because ultimately that company was selling a product and its values related so to the product. So you're talking not only about the industry but also consumers? Well, yeah, well, there's also, I, I used the term right at the start, harked back to an earlier age. There were advertising like that. Uh, uh, 30 years ago in many countries. Uh, there were typecasting, mm. uh, even just, uh, I think, uh, in discussions, a toothpaste here that oh. was... Yes, uh, that had a, portrayed a black a, man with uh, white teeth. Yes, that was acceptable 30 years ago. It became unacceptable mm -hmm. uh, because people, as markets globalize, but as also companies wish to uh, have a soft power, and China wishes a soft power to progress internationally, that you have to have greater sensibilities mm -hmm. to what is perceived on the other end of the communication. Not my motivation about what I want to say, but also how it is going mm. to be received. What do you think, Joanna, is the I biggest lesson we can learn this and make things better? Uh, I think we need to learn how to live with each other, how to embrace diversity. This is a yeah. global world. We must learn from each other. And we, we shouldn't and played out of proportion this black mm. issue is about human issue it's about environment issue that's embrace each other mm. that's learn about each other's trade each other's and we have common goals mm. to pursue mm. uh, this ad is okay. definitely learning let's try to embrace the world more closely it's going to be more sophisticated and more inclusive and thank you for joining on this edition of dialogue i'm joe in beijing goodbye tonight